Thank you, Kirsten. You make it sound like I did it all by myself. It's not, not quite true. Um, somebody might find me a... Yes. Excellent, fab. Um, so uh, I'm used to having my screen here. I've got my screen here. I'm going to have to go left-handed. Um, I'm Richard. I work for the BBC here in Bangladesh. But I'm not a journalist. I work for the BBC's international development charity, which is called BBC Media Action. And I'm going to talk about this, um, which is BBC Janela. And I have a bit of a challenge because a lot of you know a lot about it. A lot of you have heard about it um, quite a lot and probably have heard me talk about it quite a lot. So I'm going to try and bring out something that's a bit new that you might not have heard before. And I'm also going to try not to run into the panel I'm chairing, which starts in 20 minutes. And there's television to come. So keep awake, because we're going to watch some TV in a little bit. Um, you all know English in Action, I think. Um, you know that we're trying to improve English language skills in Bangladesh in order to help people gain access to the world economy and to earn more money. Um, and you probably know that there are two parts to English in Action. So there's the work that uh, colleagues are doing in schools with teachers and inside government. And then there's also the work that the BBC leads with adults. And we say adults are people who are maybe 15 and over. And we're using media to try and improve English skills amongst adults, but also trying to help adults become less scared of English, make it a little bit more accessible, and ensure that there are fewer barriers to people engaging with English learning here in Bangladesh. Um, a few key features, just in case you don't know us. So all of our content is media-driven, and all of it is remote from the teacher. There's no face-to-face -face interaction, really, with BBC Janela. It's all remote, self-directed learning, which is quite hard to do. Um, most of our content, in fact, almost all of our content is beginner level, maybe eking into pre-intermediate level. So we're not doing some of the things that the British Council are doing really well in terms of higher level English, but we are looking really at that very beginner level, and particularly for an audience that can't access that through other routes. Maybe they missed out in school, maybe they don't have the money to go to Cyphers or somewhere like that. They're trying to access English learning, and we're trying to enable them to do that really cheaply wherever they are in the country. We have personalized courses, so the course tracks you as you go through it. Um, when you finish a piece of the course, if you come back the next day, the platform, whether it's the website or the mobile phone, will pick up where you left off so you can keep going. And whichever platform you choose, you have the same content. So we work on mobile, on web, we have content in the newspaper, we have television content, we have content that you can buy in the market, you can buy a book or a CD. We also have some English learning clubs that we operate with partners around the country, including the BRAC Education Programme. Um, and whichever one of those platforms you're engaging with us on, you're getting the same syllabus. And lots of people use more than one platform. So they come with the newspaper, they read the newspaper, and then maybe they want to practice their pronunciation, so they use the mobile phone service. There's lots of people do that. There's lots more to say about how we do it, but I think what I wanted to look at is some of the numbers, first of all. So partly because of the, the brand and the, the way that we've developed the project, we have massive awareness. So 45 million people in Bangladesh have heard of us. And you can see up there some of the numbers for the different platforms. So television is the biggest, um, and at the moment, web is the smallest. Doesn't matter if people have heard about it, have they used it is the question. And we have, we think, 28 million users in Bangladesh. Again, the, the, the highest number there is on TV, but there's some significant usage. There's 7 million using mobile, there's 4 million using our newspaper service. There's about 600,000 at the moment registered users on our website, but that's growing really fast as web takes off in Bangladesh. And I'm sure you talked about that a bit yesterday when I'm afraid I wasn't here. Um, so significant reach into, into the country. And for the first time this year, um, our research shows that the majority of our users are female. And I'll go on to talk about why I think that is. In, in later on, because I think that's the, that's the key bit. But 55% of the people who are using BBC Janela are women. And more importantly for me, 
even when we only look at people who are highly engaged, which means they're using it a lot and they're using it regularly, even that, more women than men are highly engaged with the product. So I can't read my own slide. 54% of our highly engaged users are female. And probably equally important, maybe not for this seminar, but for us, is that the vast majority of our users are rural. And it's not on the slide, but the vast majority, something like 75% of our users, are from the bottom 40% income bracket. So we're targeting and reaching people in rural areas, uh, people without much money, who can't afford to access English learning through other means. So um, let's have a quick look at platforms before I talk about the reasons why I think this works. And what you've got there on that slide on the blue bars is the overall media consumption in Bangladesh by women. So the first blue bar, television, about 45% of TV viewers in Bangladesh are female. And the red bar shows how many of our BBC Janler users on that platform are female. So we're beating the trend on every platform. The mobile number is a little bit soft, perhaps, just because the, the base on the latest research for that was quite small. So I'm a little bit wary about that. It feels a bit high to me. But you can see that on those four main platforms, um, more women are using Janela than use that platform generally. Is that good? I don't know. It's one benchmark that, that we use to look at whether we're succeeding. And obviously, both us and other providers have a long way to go in terms of some of those platforms. But it's, it's one way that we can look at it. And we know that those users who engage regularly with BBC Janela are learning English. We know their competence is increasing. And we have some indication that that competence increase is leading to increased earning potential as well. So we're quite happy. I wouldn't say that we're, um, we've done everything, but we're, we're, we're relatively content at the moment about the way that we're able to engage female, rural, and poorer learners in Bangladesh. What's more interesting to talk about today, perhaps, is why that works or how we've done it. Um, and some of the things that um, we were hearing about from yesterday, right at the beginning of this morning, really resonate. You were talking about content, yeah? Uh, you were talking about the importance of content. You were talking about how access by itself isn't enough to work. And interestingly, you were talking about teachers, and somebody asked uh, Rhonda this morning whether teachers would ever be replaced by technology. And one of the things I would ask is, how well do we really know the audience that we're trying to reach? We all went round this morning in Rhonda's session, and we all had perceptions about what the barriers for female learners were, what the opportunities were. I wonder where those insights came from. I wonder how much of it is our own socio-cultural experience. I wonder how much we really know about the audience. And I wouldn't say that we do this perfectly, but one of the things that we really do in BBC Janela is start with the audience. And that's perhaps because we're inside the BBC and the audience is a really important thing for the BBC globally. So we do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of research. We understand our audience before we start going anywhere near content or even anywhere near deciding which platform to use. We want to really get under the skin of the audience. So in the early years of the project, we did lots of research. Then we started to develop things. We did lots of testing. We tested and tested and tested. We went back and back and back and back and back. Uh, and some of the people in the room were involved in that. And they know it can be a bit frustrating that you develop this amazing product, so you think, then you go and take it out and try it with a user. And they go, no, 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 that doesn't work for me. And we discovered a lot of things along that road. It was a rocky road, things like, how people can navigate through a service, particularly the mobile service. They can't do, we discovered, press one for this, press two for that, press three for the other, press four for the other. At the time in Bangladesh, that was too complicated. So we had to really cut it back to one question at a time. Do you want to go left or right? Forward or backwards? Do the quiz, do a lesson. Those simple choices. They also told us they wanted that progressive course. They wanted a start point and an end point where they could say, yes, I've done it. They didn't want lots and lots of little bits that they could choose from. They wanted, to some extent, for us to make the decisions for them and say, here's lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. When you get to lesson 96, you've finished. Yeah? 
there was a lot of work around the amount of English we were teaching in each lesson and how long it took, a lot about the level of English, the speed of delivery. You can't, you're all doing very well, but you can't have someone like me gabbling away very fast in an English lesson. So the accent, the speed that we use to demonstrate English in the lessons is very important. And the teacher, you were talking about a teacher this morning. Um, we didn't have a teacher in the early days of the course. We had learning content, but we very quickly discovered that we had to have a teacher figure, if not a teacher, in order to make it work. People were not engaging with the content without having a pseudo-human there to help guide them through it. So we have that now on the mobile service. When you call, the teacher welcomes you and guides you through your learning. It's a recorded voice. It's not a real person. I would need a call center of hundreds. Um, the same in the newspaper, the same on the website. You'll see photographs of our teachers. In fact, Alex, her, who Masuda was just talking about, who used to work for us as well, Alex is one of our teachers on the website. So that was, that was very important, as was the way that we're using Bangla, the level of Bangla, the style, the accent, whether we use formal Bangla like a lot of the media do, or more informal. And that's different for different platforms. The type of Bangla you'd use in Protomalo is different from the type of Bangla that you'd use on BTV, for example. Um, here's one example of what we understand about our audience. So this is Annika. She's been on our longitudinal panel study for the last six or seven years. Um, she lives in Kulna. And I'll, I'll give you a chance to read it, but those are some of the things that she's told us about her journey, her motivation for learning English in the first place, um, and then what she's got from it so far. So there's a, a business interest there, but also she wants to be able to watch MasterChef Australia, and she'd like to be able to understand it. Yeah, great. Um, there's also a, a social need. She'd like to learn English because it shows that she's intelligent and it shows that she's got high social status. But she wasn't very confident. She'd had some bad experiences in school. Um, she was a bit scared about talking English because... People, when she made a mistake, it would, it would be embarrassing for her. And she used our lessons in Protomalo, our website, and watched some of our content on BTV. And it sort of changed her approach to learning. Before, she was all about grammar, um, and, and she's got into more sort of learning in other ways since she's been using Janla. Now, let's not get into the grammar translation versus communicative English argument, because we might be here with Arifa, I'm sure you would have a lot to say about it, but we'll be here all night. Um, and she's still going, she's still learning. She uses the English to call some uh, relatives that she has outside Bangladesh, and generally has more motivation and more confidence to use the language, which is important. There's an insight into our audience. Here's another one. Um, we found very early that particularly for female audiences, a major driver for wanting to learn English was because they wanted to help teach their children English. It's not the only reason, but it was a really key thing that came out of our early research. And the photos, which aren't brilliantly clear, are from our web course, which features a female character learning English in order to teach her son English and help him through school. And the narrative of the course, as you learn English, is that these two are learning together, mum and son. And so it's one little example of how we've taken an audience insight and turned it into a piece of content which we think probably resonates with the audience that we're trying to attract. I'm going to show you two more bits of those. These are, these are TV examples. Um, and it's a, it's a completely different insight. It's about going back to the lady in Kulna, um, another thing that came out was English for business, English for entrepreneurism, English as a way that could help me start a business. And we've done a couple of things about that. The first is a very short uh, TV commercial, which we used to launch um, one of our courses a couple of years ago. Um, and it sort of speaks for itself. So let me play. <laughs> I'm a professional civil engineer. Office I'm a correspondence, documentation, presentation, shabby English. I'm a professional. 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 I'm
কিন্তু বিবিসি জানালার ইংরেজি শেখার ওয়েবসাইটটি ইউজ করার পর থেকে সেই সমস্যাটা অনেকটাই কেটে গেছে এখন আমি আগে থেকে অনেক বেশি কনফিডেন্ট প্রয়োজনীয় ইংরেজি শিখতে আপনার মোবাইল ফোন থেকে ডায়াল করুন তিন শূন্য 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 ছয় নম্বরে অথবা ভিজিট করুন বিবিসি জানালা ডট কম বিবিসি জানালা চাইলেই পারবেন sound wasn't quite working but one example of uh, and I'm I'll come back and talk about whether I think it works or not but using a perhaps slightly unusual role model to demonstrate the benefits of learning English and to then hopefully encourage people to access the services and do it and we hope that that commercial resonates with the motivation of some of our potential audience the last thing I will play you is a uh, a piece of a television program called Nije Nije Sheka, which was on air this year. And it's a reality TV show where every week we meet a new person who has some need for learning English, and we see them working with a mentor on screen through the week, learning just enough English to be able to accomplish a challenge on the last day of the week. That might be uh, selling something in their shop to a foreigner. It might be giving a presentation. It might be um, having a job interview on Skype with somebody uh, on Odesk for business outsourcing. Um, but the, the show takes you through their learning journey, helps introduce some learning techniques, and then at the end of the show, will they or won't they be able to meet this challenge? And what I'm going to show you is a, a clip from a lady called Tahura Begum, who was in the show. And we went back and saw her one year after her challenge and talked to her about whether she'd continued to learn English, and if so, what difference it had made to her life. Um, and what I really like about this clip is, yes, there's issues in there about entrepreneurism, but also there's a whole load of other development issues which are nothing to do with education or employment, which are coming out. And I think one of the things we found over the project is that English can certainly bring you more than just the language skills. It, the, the, the confidence that it brings has other benefits too. So, let me play you uh, this clip of Tahur. I don't have to say anything about it, but I don't have to say anything about it. माल विभिन्न देशे जाए कष्ट तैरी करते सरसि तीन कारण इंगलिस तरह कथा आज प्राय बचर खान पर कम आहुरा बेगम गत एक बसर धरे हमें अनेक परिश्रम करी और लोकजन सबाई कारखाना काचा छो ए पाखा कर आगे एक दुईटा कर सूझ पे अमेरिका माल पाठा हमार कारखाना अनेक लोकजन क्ज कर प्रचुर मैं प्रोडक्शन प्रचुर होते रात जन क्ज करते अर्डर क्ज जो आस तक जान मैं भलोभ क्ज करते लाइट लगे गरम समय गरम लगे तक फैन लगे विभिन्न विश्व विभिन्न देशे प्रोडक्ट पोच दीते एक बस मध्य अनेक डेवलप होवसा खूब भलो लगते जे हमें कष्ट एत दूर पोची हमें बाच्चार संगे इंगरेजी चर्चा करी हमार हजबैंडर सबसे माझे माझे इंगलिस चर्चा करी आर वार्कारे साथ शोरूमे जो जा तक हमारे देवर साथ इंगलिस चर्चा कर चर्चार माध्यम जी बार सरसि धरते परि कि तक तो मैं वार्कारों बाढ़ उन्नति हो इंगरेजी चर्चा करी जाते वार्कार मत ओराव जाते एक दिन मत जीवन उन्नति करते शुद्ध इंगलिस शिखले ही ना ताके मैं क्या दक्षताओ तर मजे थकते हैं से जीवन अनेक उन्नत करते So understanding the audience, really using that as the focus before we develop anything, and then making sure we choose the right mechanisms to develop really good, appropriate content, yeah? There's very little 
influence that we can have on access, perhaps, but we can make sure that for those who do have access, we've made the content that's really going to work for them. There's a few things still left to do, I think. We really need to sort out web access, particularly here in Bangladesh. It's growing, um, and I hear talk of a... I was at the, the, the conference at the CTO last week. I hear talk of cheap smartphones, even cheaper smartphones, hitting us soon. But we really need to sort that out. Um, but quality and relevance of learning content, a lot of people are doing some really good stuff, but some of it, I fear, is still awful. Um, how much of that content is in Bangla? and how much is in English, particularly for lower level learners. There's another pedagogical debate to have there, but um, I think certainly from our research, we need to be worried about progressing to English as the medium of instruction too early. And then I wonder, and it's a shame I wasn't here to, to hear Tom speak yesterday, but I wonder whether there is enough evidence about what technology enabled English learning can do particularly in terms of what are the elements behind self-efficacy, yeah? So we're saying, I'm here telling you that if I show a role model on screen and I understand what makes my audience tick, then that's enough to get them to engage with something. But I'm not sure that we know that's true yet. I'm not sure that we've unpicked what can influence confidence and motivation sufficiently to be able to fully understand how that process works. Um, I think there's also other things that we need to look at in terms of how uh, using technology as a learning tool can in itself improve people's literacy with technology. And we've heard a lot today, and I'm sure yesterday, about how important that digital literacy element of our work is. So um, we're going to talk in, in a moment about other challenges and barriers that remain. Those are a few that occurred to me last night as I was finishing this off. Um, we're not there yet, and certainly BBC Janela is not finished yet, and we'll, we'll, we've got other things to do. But I think, I hope, that this has been a little bit helpful in terms of analysing a little bit of how we've succeeded and, and what we've done to do that. Thank you.